ticked, did the down and ticked, did the down and ticked, did the down, down. As you look, the whole room explodes, explodes. As you look, the whole room explodes, explodes. Okay, so it's great actually to be here. I think it's my third year uh, with DevCon. And it's definitely one of the best uh, Dev conferences in Tel Aviv, if not the best. Um, the talk will be quite short, so if you have any question afterwards, just feel free. I'll hang out here most of the day, and uh, I'll be more than happy to try and uh, answer all your questions. So uh, who am I and what I do? I'm uh, working for a little startup. Uh, I have a great pleasure to be the link that connects outside developer startups with Google. And the main goal of this uh, role is to try and find those win-win situations for you, the developers, and to Google. So in other words, it's meaning building on the platform, leveraging the APIs, and making the most of what Google is uh, offering developers. Um, those are just uh, three uh, of the most popular places that you can find me on the web today. Um, Greeny, though, actually will work on Twitter or LinkedIn or any other network that you like to work over there. So just feel free to ping me. So in the past 15 years, Google basically built um, quite a large infrastructure that allows us to be Google. And what I'm passionate about these days is the ability for you, the external developers, to enjoy the same infrastructure that Google built in order to run its own magic. Um, the, the data centers and the servers are looking actually quite beautiful. Um, and I think that um, we're actually nail it with this statement. And we internally and externally are not uh, exaggerating to the exact same of what they meant, but I think it's pretty accurate to say that um, it's probably what made Google's uh, the cloud and the ability to work with a network that is around the world with the consistent times that usually it's few milliseconds and giving you, the developer, the same uh, tools, APIs, and platforms is um, very, very impressive. Um, Google is uh, one of, uh, actually, the only not ISP that actually have uh, uh, cables around the world in the oceans, uh, shark proof. And um, for you, the developer, what this means is that you could rely on certain times in order to each and every call on the APIs. Um, in terms of innovations, um, and you could see here just uh, a quick browser of the past. Uh, we started with the Google file system that actually allow us to crawl the web, have few copies of the web, and then analyze it so you, in your queries, could get the results quite fast. And then it moved quite quickly um, with MapReduce that led to the Hadoop um, ecosystem, and then Bigtable, the biggest NoSQL database in the world today. Um, Dramel that actually brought uh, BigQuery to life, and you could see lots of other nice, cool um, open source projects that are running on top of Hadoop that are trying to mimic it, like Impala, Spark, and many others. And um, we're moving quite quickly to uh, the current days. Um, the new ability, we call it internally uh, Clossus, but uh, for you it's Cloud SQL, that is uh, basically another way that we looked into it for you, the developers, to hold your binary or text data very efficiently. And it's moving faster and faster, which Omega is the code name for internally, basically a task orchestration that App Engine and Compute Engine is using heavily. Um, what it can power, so a few of the big names that you are probably very well aware. Um, all of them are running on uh, Compute, and I'll try just to give you examples for the power of it um, in following slides. So Google Cloud Platform as a whole uh, consists of many, many different uh, components. And if you will go to cloud.google.com, you'll see quite nice introduction of the different models. And uh, it's basically pick and choose, so whatever is working for you. I'll try um, to just give you good hints to each and every uh, component. 
and hopefully you'll find it useful. So first, uh, let's uh, try and focus on the compute side of things. Um, App Engine was around here for a long time, and compute was actually in, uh, introduced to the world um, just before last I.O. So um, let's uh, see what we have on, on those two. Um, just to put the lay of the land, Google uh, believed from day one that uh, abstraction and actually giving you the ability to work on what you're good at is a very good uh, motivation. And if at the beginning it was uh, IIS as infrastructure, um, from day one, Google App Engine was more on the platform as a service and actually more and more moving towards uh, software as a service, which in a way, giving you just the ability to not worry of being the best uh, system administrator in the world or to optimize memcache or trying to uh, going down the route of uh, trying to improve some things. Um, as you can imagine, in Google, uh, we have quite a lot of experience with doing this. And uh, basically, as an engineer in Google, you don't need to go deeper and uh, put your own uh, machines out there. It's basically done for you. Um, with Compute Engine, the beauty here was that uh, with the movement of uh, Dockers, who, who here is uh, working or touch or play with Dockers? Great, okay. So for the ones that didn't, highly encourage you to check it out, another powerful open source project that I guess will gain a lot of traction uh, in the uh, next several months. Um, but the beauty here in Compute Engine, and that's why it reminded me, Dockers, is the ability to work with the modeler environment, which basically it's a container world that you could come with a container and actually work and be uh, efficient with it as much as possible. So each company or each little startup got its own way of deployment of things, working in production, testing environments, so on and so forth. And with Compute Engine, basically you could bring your own LAMP stack, any stack actually that you work there. It might be Node.js, it might be anything that you worked and just running on the infrastructure that is uh, extremely fast. Um, other very, very nice things um, that are coming with Compute Engine is basically the ability to bill you per um, sub hours. It's actually in 10 minutes in uh, increments, so it's very accurate in the way of billing. And it's a very, um, a very cheap, usually. Uh, the total cost of ownership or the ROI is very competitive, and again, go after the talk. And uh, the slides, of course, will be online, so you could take them, um, just check it out and see. It's um, a very lucrative offer. Uh, for the ones that are um, passionate about uh, our Earth, so it's up to 50% more uh, green solution than any other cloud out there. And um, one of the beauty here is that uh, Google got those data centers in places where uh, we could really make things efficient. Um, this is just coming to show you the power of it. Um, 1,200 bucks, they uh, broke the world record. Um, very impressive. Not to mention that if you're comparing it apples to apples with other solutions, it's uh, much more expensive. So uh, like, just like MapR, I guess it uh, might work very, very nicely for you. I wanted to do here a cool little demo, but um, I don't have a good uh, connection here, thanks to you guys. So um, I'll put the slides uh, on my site later, and um, just feel free to play with it. So GC in action basically giving you the ability to launch 50, 500, 5,000 instances on Compute Engine, and you'll see that it happens in a matter of seconds. Um, it's very cool. Actually, all the code is on GitHub, so the link is here, and you can play with the code, see the code, and um, just take it for a ride and see uh, if it's working for you. So we left Compute Engine. What's new with App Engine? App Engine used to be with this uh, stigma, and especially here in Israel, that if you are not Java developer or Python, it's not for you. So that changed a lot since uh, then. Uh, last year, we uh, announced uh, PHP as another VM that is running there. And I know many developers are enjoying it. Um, another very, very powerful solution that I don't see too many startups here that are using, but in Europe, I see in the past half a year, quite nice adoption is the Go language, which is uh, working perfectly on App Engine. Um, it's still in the beta mode, but it's a very, very powerful solution for those that are looking for a very short, uh, concurrent code with solutions that giving you really the ability to fly with minimal amount of coding on the server side, of course. 
The beauty of App Engine is that you could really focus on what you are bringing to the world, what is the differentiator of what you're doing, and um, it will auto scale. It will give you a lot of benefits that uh, you won't need to worry of. Uh, a pure platform as a service. And uh, luckily today we have uh, service level agreements and lots of benefits that uh, for bigger organizations are quite crucial and important. Um, it's coming with, of course, a local uh, environment, so you could uh, work with what you like and with the click of a button deploying it to the um, QA environment, testing environment, and of course production. I covered most of the um, aspects here. Uh, there are a bit more, and of course, the, all the um, well-known popular web frameworks will work as well. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes um, from Udacity. Those who know, uh, huge movement now in the free education. Um, there's Udacity, Khan Academy, actually, both are on App Engine, and both are enjoying it uh, uh, a lot. Let's focus a bit about storage. Compute is very powerful uh, offering, but uh, we have some new offering that hopefully um, will give people a new look about what Google is offering on that front. So cloud storage, um, I'm sure some of you know or play with it or definitely have the ability to run it on uh, different clouds. Um, the beauty here is that uh, it's working um, extremely fast and you could do quite a lot of things like in other known services. Um, the link here is actually for a GitHub repo that giving you the ability to see how you're migrating from um, lots of other options into um, this offering. Um, in terms of uh, data store, um, it's a NoSQL, and the ability here now to work with it, it used to be bundle inside App Engine. Today, it's got its own RESTful API, and you could work with Compute Engine with it very powerfully and easily. Um, got lots of um, great things um, that making you, the developer, much more productive with it in terms of debugging, building the schemas, looking in queries, and later on, fine tuning and working on the performance side of things. It's got some uh, impressive things. Um, in terms of redundancy, um, each and every object will be copied at least six or more times around the world and lots of other benefits that you are not thinking about, but when you need them, they are there. Cloud SQL, um, it's another uh, very powerful offering, basically built on top of um, my SQL technology. If you have your own SQL somewhere, it will be very, very similar to work with. The beauty here is that it will scale very, very easily, and will give you the ability to not worry about sharding, master-slave configuration, and so on and so forth. Um, let's try just to get some of the services that we have around the cloud ecosystem. There are many, many more. I just try to really pick and choose a few of them. And for the ones that are interesting in uh, task queues and many other benefits that we have today, um, I won't touch them, but we'll have links in the end. So BigQuery is another um, extremely powerful uh, service that Google is offering, basically giving you the ability to query terabytes of data under 10 seconds, 8 seconds, 3 seconds, depends. Um, you got here two uh, blog posts that I wrote. One is just the ability to work with Google BigQuery through JavaScript, and the other is just to work with it with Node.js, but you have plenty of other abilities um, not to mention the RESTful API that it got, but on each and every platform and technology that you're working, each language, popular language, got its own client. The beauty here is that once you are pushing your data into um, Google Cloud Storage, it's got its own connector to BigQuery, or you could just stream your data uh, to BigQuery itself. Um, you could play with it through the web interface that it got and got a feel for the data. And you have some nice uh, public repositories over there, like uh, all Wikipedia, GitHub, so you could just see how powerful this uh, solution is. Um, here, if you'll click, you'll just see the ability to work with GitHub uh, data on it. Um, quite nice and interesting to explore what is hot and what people are doing on GitHub in different uh, slices of time. 
Mobile backend starter, uh, we announced it last I.O. Uh, basically, the ability for you to really bootstrap and quickly come up with uh, both a client-side um, application, an Android one, and a server-side API, a RESTful API that will talk with it. And you're enjoying both worlds, of course, the powerful of scaling to the cloud if you got fortunate and lucky and you have now millions of users. And of course, quite quickly, work with the best practices of how to design and develop for Android. Um, it's another very, very good uh, point just to start and be effective and to try quickly uh, new ideas. So some examples of uh, current players that are doing uh, quite impressive things on the platform. Um, I'm sure you heard and I heard recently that the number is actually much larger than this. They are uh, happy campers on App Engine and working with it extensively. They're working with lots of other technologies that I mentioned, but App Engine is by far uh, the biggest one. Uh, Songpop, um, another uh, company um, that got this insane number of uh, 18 terahertz per day, um, also working uh, quite closely, um, both with data storage and App Engine. And for here, a uh, much more uh, closer example uh, in Europe when we're talking about the Eurovision, uh, the numbers are quite impressive in terms of uh, what is the throughput, and they're working uh, quite nicely with the uh, Compute Engine. Khan Academy is uh, another uh, bold example, um, and here is um, uh, their lead developer, Ben. I highly encourage you just to check it out. It's a uh, two minute uh, brief that is giving why App Engine helped them and how they solved many issues that they had in the past in other clouds providers. So, in terms of um, powering the futures and making you flourish on Google uh, infrastructure, um, basically, we're seeing a shift in terms of the abstraction layer and what we're providing you. So, it's quite common to see the pace of innovation and what we are going to see in the next few months and years in terms of those two platforms. And I think that if App Engine, in a way, the platform is helping your needs and answering them, probably it's great to check it and see if it's something that could work for you, because it, of course, will save you lots of um, redundant hours, reinventing the wheel, and doing the same things that others are doing. It's not the answer for everything, and that's why in Compute Engine and, of course, other cloud out there that giving you the infrastructure, if your certain needs need it, then, of course, it might be much better to go with that uh, solution. Uh, we see a lot of uh, ways and thinking innovatively how to uh, visualize or make it more virtual the system that we're working with. And I can think, um, and actually in the demo you'll see, today you have those concepts of instance and you're booting the instance and you're working with it and basically we're SSHing to it. Um, in the near future, I think we'll skip all those places. And uh, Netflix got a really nice quote about when they are orchestrating their cloud, if you SSHing to a machine, basically you failed because Everything should be automatically, everything should be through a script, and you need to enjoy the abilities of the cloud and the scaling and the ability to just launch machines and go automatically and close them automatically uh, because then you're really leveraging the benefits of um, the cost reduction that the cloud is bringing us. Um, so in terms of things that are uh, completely brand new on uh, Compute Engine, we now have a very nice, easy way to do load balancing. It's keeping proving. It's currently level seven, but hopefully it will be uh, level three soon. Um, in terms of uh, the cloud uh, data store, there's a full talk about this subject and what are the improvements. And hopefully in this Google I.O. there will be even more announcement about making it uh, faster. Um, improvement in terms of more abilities and uh, more uh, VMs on App Engine. So currently we have uh, PHP, which was one of the top requests that we had uh, for quite a long time. Um, encryption. Encryption is actually done uh, by default on Compute Engine, and uh, we have it on Cloud Storage Object as well. Dedicated memcache for the ones that need uh, this service. It's actually um, a second one, and now we have it in a preview mode, but you have the ability to have a shared memcache uh, when you're working with uh, Compute or App Engine, and actually I highly encourage you to use it because it's free. 
and it could uh, bring your cost down dramatically, and Google offer it um, this service as uh, best effort. So, of course, for the ones that want the consistency and the specific requirements, they will go with Dedicate, but if you're a little startup or a company that, uh, actually, we have some big companies that working with uh, shared memcached as well. Um, different VM runtimes. Uh, basically, it's bring your own VM to App Engine and uh, compute. And that's actually one of the most uh, powerful, interesting uh, area that I see lots of uh, rapid uh, movement over there. And uh, you can imagine what will be uh, some of the most popular ones in the next, uh, let's say, year or two. I put on this slide just a few of the most uh, good places to check out if you have any questions. Uh, we're working actively on Stack Overflow, so feel free um, to ask there and then ping me. And if I'll know the answer, I'll try to do my best over there. If not, I could probably ping to someone that uh, is working exactly on that uh, specific problem. Um, Google Plus, uh, Google Cloud Platform on Google Plus is um, quite active, so if you want to keep uh, yourself updated, that will be probably one of the best sources. Um, Google Drive, uh, we, I don't have a lot of time, but since I'm uh, quite passionate about this uh, project as well, um, I'll just try to mention in few of, uh, a few minutes just what is uh, unique about it, and unlike any other uh, things that you are well aware of from the previous years. So that was one of the statements, and I started my days in Google as a Chrome OS developer advocate, but um, this is basically in the lay of the ground for Chrome OS and, of course, Google Drive, is to get your data when you need it on every and, and any device. And I think what's actually very unique about Google Drive and very differentiate from any other uh, syncing service that you know out there is the focusing on the content and making you useful on that specific content. So it won't be just the ability to work on docs, sheets, uh, slides, and be able to share them with any others, doesn't matter the size of it, and not only to give the ability to have this one source of truth that you could collaborate and work with, but moreover, just to use the same APIs and same infrastructure that Google developed those three quite nice products to your own products. Um, and basically, that's what you're getting uh, with the real-time API, the collaboration. You're working with the same mechanism of putting comments, working on the same document, 30 people from all around the world, having this one source of truth. Not to mention that those are just three file types, but we have support for um, over three dozen of files. So any file that you want, might be video, presentation, anything could be um, there. There's very nice samples on GitHubs, and uh, the link will be in the end. Uh, Lucy chart for the ones that know, uh, doesn't know it, um, those are some of the metrics that they came up after they did the drive integration. They had a very nice product before, but with the drive integration, um, it's a pretty powerful uh, tool, and I highly encourage you just to play with it and check it. So in a way, it's more of try to pick and choose the best thing that will work for your case, for your ecosystem. Um, as you all know, Google is not a small company anymore, and we have lots of different APIs and uh, platforms for you to play with and to uh, bring your magic into the world. So um, just choose the best tool for the job and uh, be productive with it. Um, this is one of the best landing pages, um, so feel free to just start the point of exploration there. And um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to try and answer them. Um, do you have any uh, customer examples that are using both the uh, Google Cloud solutions and another solution in tandem successfully? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll repeat the question just to make sure that I understood it correctly. Do we have any examples for uh, uh, customers that are using Google uh, Cloud offering and another uh, cloud offering? Correct? Yes, we have quite a lot of them. Um, many startups, many big organizations are working with several cloud providers. 
So some will try to use, um, um, let's say, Hub Engine and um, EC2, or some of them will use uh, S3 and some of Google uh, um, offering. And um, actually, in Europe, we have quite a lot of these that are um, just using several. Yeah, it, it usually happens when uh, organization started with uh, one offering or one cloud provider and then just want to check uh, what's new on others and then uh, we're seeing it uh, shifting more and more. Okay, great. So please feel free just to ping me online or just catch me here later. Um, and I'll be more than happy to try and answer the questions. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot.